Coming up on today's show, Hyundai confirms that a battery shortage is causing production delays for the Ionic EV. Tesla prepares a second spring shutdown in order to streamline production and takes steps to simplify its management structure as well. And a Tesla Model X tows a Boeing Dreamliner. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki, your resident Ecotech host. And after a week off, there's really a lot of news to get through. So let's get to it. We're starting today's show with a confirmation from Hyundai that it's put custom orders for its mid-range Ionic EV electric car on hold for the time being due to a global battery supply shortage, something which a Hyundai America spokesperson has hinted may even affect production plans for the upcoming Kona EV. The global battery shortage, driven by dramatically increased demand for both electric vehicle and consumer gadget batteries, may not resolve itself all that easily, especially with so many automakers securing long-term supplies for the future. For now then, Ionic EV customers with outstanding orders will eventually get their cars, while those who want to order an Ionic EV will be able to pre-order a 2019 model with deliveries beginning no earlier than July. As more news stories about alleged Tesla autopilot crashes hit the headlines, an owner who crashed her Model S into the back of a fire truck in Utah last week has received a citation from the local police for using her cell phone just before the crash, rather than paying attention to the road ahead. While this is good news for Tesla in terms of blame, it does highlight yet again the challenges that semi-autonomous systems have, ensuring that the driver stays alert and engaged onto the road at all times. In a related piece of news, Tesla CEO Elon Musk dismissed reports this week that the company had declined to use sensors to detect driver attentiveness, like eye tracking systems, because they were simply too expensive, stating instead that eye tracking had been rejected in the past because it wasn't effective enough. As some viewers may know, however, there does appear to be driver facing cameras in the Tesla Model 3, suggesting this may change in the future, although Tesla hasn't actually confirmed or denied this. Elon Musk held a special Boring Company event on Thursday night this week, at which he unveiled the confirmed collaboration between the Tunnel Transportation Company and SpaceX, a collaboration which would see them work on a global transportation system that uses rockets and Boring Company tunnels to get you from one place to another, anywhere on Earth, in less than 30 minutes. Musk says that the Boring Company, which I should note is working on its own proprietary tunnel boring machine and has just unveiled a halfway house machine that's essentially modified with Boring Company tech, is well on its way to building massive tunnels at breakneck speeds, making tunnel mining from the bedrock they pass through themselves. With a claimed $1 fare for a single ride on the network, the Boring Company's pods will travel at speeds of up to 150 miles per hour, which is less than Hyperloop speeds, but in Musk's words, is still damn fast and cheap. Were it from any other company with any other person in charge, you might view this as completely pie in the sky, but I'm sure by now that you know it's not quite that easy when Mr. Musk's in charge. In keeping with statements made during its Q1 earnings call, Tesla confirmed this week that it plans to shut down its Fremont production facility for a further six days this month in order to continue to refine the line so that it can speed up vehicle production. Hitting around 500 Model 3s per day this week, Tesla's production volume is increasing apace, and Tesla hopes the modifications will bring its vehicle output to a whole new level. At the same time, Tesla is also starting its executive restructuring process, thinning back the number of execs in the company and streamlining company structure. This, again promised in the Q1 call, should help reduce overheads and make change easier within the company. And if that wasn't enough, Elon Musk has just reportedly hired two interns from Canada to become official professional problem solvers, something which should certainly grease the wheels of productivity, reduce headaches and improve company output. Unity. The Swedish company, which has successfully crowdfunded development of its utilitarian Unity One EV for the past two years, has unveiled its first working prototype, showcasing the functioning proof of concept that the firm hopes will eventually lead to a production model. 
With a 22 kilowatt hour battery pack, Unity says the Unity One will have a real world range of 300 kilometers. But while the car will retail from less than 20,000 euro, that's about 35,000 Kiwi dollars, the tiny quirky EV will have a tough time attracting buyers thanks to its small size, think smart car and quirky joystick control mechanism. As someone who loves such vehicles, I can't wait to give it a go, but sadly, the automotive history books are strewn with a lot of vehicles like this, and only a truly clever marketing strategy will sway the toughest of consumers, I fear. With more and more cars like the Tesla Model S and Model X now offering remote parking capabilities, the UK has finally made the technology legal, approving a regulation change that will take effect next month and no longer require that the driver be behind the wheel of the car when pulling their vehicle into or out of a parking space or garage. The new law will specifically make it legal to use a handheld remote controlled app or device like a remote control, but says that the app or device must be legal, I'm going to assume manufacturer made and type approved here, and that the feature must only be used for remote parking and nothing else and that the driver must not put other people in danger when using the feature. So no remote controlling your Tesla down the street, yet. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, one of two groups responsible for US crash test ratings, has given the Tesla Model 3 a superior rating in its front crash prevention section. Interestingly, the IIHS hasn't published full crash test results yet, and so the rating only concerns forward collision avoidance and mitigation, which in this case isn't carried out by Tesla's autopilot system, but rather the active safety system found in every Tesla Model 3, regardless of if the autopilot has been activated or not. I'm sure full crash test results will be forthcoming soon, so when I have them, I'll share. Dutch truck firm DAF has just revealed a brand new all-electric 40-ton truck built in collaboration with VDL, and it hopes that it will allow companies to electrify inner-city delivery routes. Rated to haul up to 40 metric tons, the CL Electric isn't exactly a long-distance vehicle, with a range of just 60 miles, that's 100 kilometers per charge, of its 170 kilowatt-hour battery pack. That's led many of you to criticize the truck as not being a worthy vehicle, especially given the upcoming Tesla Semi. But that's kind of missing the point, since the CL Electric has been designed for inner city last mile deliveries, where air pollution is at its worst and where daily routes are far smaller than the truck's range. A smaller capacity battery pack also keeps end costs low and, says DAF, the truck should be able to charge from 80 to 80% full in less than half an hour while the vehicle's unloading. Just like the electric car market, then it seems people need to remember that vehicles aren't always designed for the same tasks and therefore shouldn't be compared to one another. And finally, we all know that Tesla's Model X is quite the beast when it comes to towing. And if you've watched this show for the last six months or so, you'll likely have seen a Tesla Model X tow a large tractor trailer in the snow in order to get the same, get up a mountain. But this week, a new video appeared online that blew the Model X truck towing out of the water. A standard Model X towing a Qantas Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner. One of the most efficient airplanes out there, the Dreamliner already uses a lot less fuel than its competitors, but if Qantas, who's already made other videos with Teslas, exchanged its tugs for Model Xs, I'm guessing it could lower airport emissions too. What do you think? And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, you know what to do. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness. So make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. In the meantime, have a fantastic weekend. Make sure you do something fun. And don't forget to keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero Certified Renewable Electricity Company. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.